A few words now about how to handle the audio signal after it leaves your computer. In order to monitor your project, you're going to need some headphones, speakers, and if you can, studio monitors. An audio selector, sometimes called an audio switcher, is also very handy in this setup. Now, what's the difference between speakers, studio monitors, and headphones? Let's get one fact straight right from the start. Under no circumstances should you make alterations to your mix based on what you hear in your headphones. On the other hand, if you record vocals or acoustic instruments, headphones become really handy for monitoring early recorded tracks. We also often hear this question, can't I just use my hi-fi speakers? Well, the answer is yes, you can, but there is still a problem with this approach, even if you've got a good set of speakers. Most consumer systems have built-in equalization curves that add some sheen to your sound. On the other hand, studio monitors are engineered to present the material with the utmost accuracy. Just a quick word now about microphones. If you're going to record any acoustic sources at all, the importance of a good microphone cannot be exaggerated. The topic of microphones is a very broad one, on which I could spend easily a few hours. However, what kind of microphone or microphones you really need really depends on your specific musical circumstances. So, let me mention one thing. A large diaphragm mic will serve you better than a few inexpensive condenser or dynamic mics. By the way, a large diaphragm microphone has a diaphragm of more than three-quarter inches in diameter. Last, but definitely not least, in these general introductory comments, the importance of an external hard drive. I mentioned this earlier. It does serve two functions. First of all, it's a reliable and easy-to-use backup for your projects. Secondly, when you've recorded more than a few projects, you may find yourself running out of space on your PC or Mac, and it really makes sense to archive inactive projects on an external hard drive, which is easy to access anytime you need it. And that concludes our introductory segment on Cubase.